Hi, I'm Jake Borshevsky, automotive student right here in good old Southern Illinois University. And today, I'm going to do a deep dive on power steering. Ever since the dawn of the automobile, steering has been one of the most important functions of a vehicle. Because if you ask me, vehicle that you can't steer is pretty much undrivable. Which is pretty important if you're trying to get to where you need to go. Is the steering wheel fly off and burst? Steering back in the day was great and all, but it had its drawbacks. It would take a lot of elbow grease just to turn the wheel in the direction that you wanted to go. Well, that all changed in 1951 when Chrysler Automobile decided to add a little bit of power to the table. With the introduction of power steering into the 1951 Chrysler Imperial, consumers very quickly started to enjoy the easier amount of effort it took to actually turn your wheel. Yes, I think we can all agree, power steering is awesome. But how has it changed over the years? How does it even work? One, two, three, four, one. Ah, forget five. Now this is your typical steering system. So this is a rack and pinion setup, which means you got your pinion gear here, got your rack here. Now when you turn the steering wheel, which should be, I don't know, up here maybe, your pinion gear turns the rack, and in turn, see what I did there? Turns your tie rods, causing both of your front wheels to turn in the direction that you turn the steering wheel. Now this diagram here shows it a little bit in more detail. But, as we get into the power piece of it, well, things get a little bit more interesting. So it's sort of the same old stuff from the previous rack and pinion setup, right? You got your tie rods here, you got your rack and your pinion. Now the big difference here is this bad boy right here. This is your rotary control valve along with these pressure lines here. Basically what happens is when you turn the wheel, hydraulic fluid from the control valve is sent down these fluid lines here. These lines lead to the rack and allow the hydraulic fluid coming from the control valve to assist the rack in steering the vehicle. This in turn is accomplished via the implementation of these hydraulic pistons that push fluid to help steer the rack, hence the name power steering. Now once the power steering fluid is pushed by the piston and is done assisting the rack in turning the wheel, the power steering fluid is then returned through these little return lines here. But Jake, you might be asking, where the hell does it return to? Well, it returns to a power steering fluid pump which is mounted on the front of the engine. This pump, which is driven by the serpentine belt, is responsible for sending power steering fluid back through the system again and again and repressurizing it to continue to assist the rack in steering. This entire process results in easier steering effort from the driver, making steering your vehicle as easy as possible. Now, as you probably could have guessed, there, there is no pump on this assembly here. I'm gonna go and get one for you and we can take a look at it together. Now we do have some power steering pumps lying around that I could show you, but nah, that'd be too easy. Instead, I'm going to show you how to remove one. In this case, I'm gonna use this chassis off of this old Ford Windstar here. Before we do anything to the pump itself, we need to get the pulley off. Now you can get special pulley remover and installer kits at AutoZone or any other auto parts store. But for simplicity's sake of this video, I'm gonna use something a little smaller. I'm gonna use this little pulley puller here that we have lying around. 
Now when you're using this little feller, what you want to make sure you do is you want to use the PS side of the puller. You don't want to use the WP, that's for water pump. PS is power steering, WP is water pump. And as you can see here, the puller for the water pump side fits just right. Oh, it's a little bit smaller and with the WP it's a tad bit bigger. Now you're also going to need two wrenches here. You're going to need a 5 8 to turn the bolt and then you're going to need an adjustable wrench to hold the puller in place. Now this small pulley remover works very similar to that of your typical pulley remover and installer. You thread the bolt onto the pulley. Now like I stated earlier, you want to make sure that you use the PS side. Now you see the center little divot of the tool, right? That's where you're going to want to put your adjustable wrench to hold the tool in place and assist with getting the pulley off. And then you want to take your 5 8 wrench and you want to put it on the bolt. And then what you're going to want to do, you're going to want to turn the bolt with the 5 8 wrench going clockwise. Keep that in mind. It's not righty tighty in this situation. You're going to want to go clockwise while while using your adjustable wrench mounted in the center to support the pulley to keep it from spinning. And you're going to want to keep turning clockwise. Now I have a feeling that some people are going to ask about this. They're going to be like, Jake, can you use an impact wrench? Can you use an impact gun? And the answer is yes, you can. In fact, it is probably much easier, easier than what I am doing as you can See, I got to put a lot of uh, a lot of oomph into getting this pulley off. However, for simplicity's sake of this video and for the fact that a lot of us auto students here don't have fancy impact guns, I just thought to do it the manual way. After I turned in the bolt deep enough, I wasn't able to fit my wrench anymore. So I went to my toolbox and grabbed a ratchet with a 5.8 socket to finish the job. Just a couple more turns. And there we go. That's how you get your power steering pump pulley off. Now that you got the pulley off, removing the pump from here is pretty straightforward. What you're going to want to do is look for the bolts that hold the pump on to the engine. And depending upon make or manufacture, your pulley might even have small little holes in it that allow you to fit a ratchet in there to take them out. And finally, just unscrew the pressure lines from the pump with a wrench. And there you go. That is how you take a power steering pump off. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Jake Borshevsky, and it's been fun.